Truly I tell you, these are the words of Jesus, wherever this gospel is preached, even here at Isaiah this morning, wherever this gospel is being preached, in the whole world, it says, in the whole world, wherever this gospel is preached, what she has done also will be told in my name for the memory of her. It will be told for the memory of her. Before we go into the study of this passage, if you're taking down notes, you can write this title, Limitless Love, Limitless Love. Limitless Love. When we study the Gospels, it always helps us if we can understand the context or the background in which this narration is made. Every week after I preach a sermon, I write it on one of my books so that I don't repeat the same passage if I can. And this is the third time I'm preaching from gospel according to Matthew. All the four evangelists, those who wrote the gospel, they are called evangelists. All the four evangelists had a particular crowd or group of people. When you communicate, you should know the crowd that you are addressing. I have opportunities and amateurs and young people. Everyone seated here. I have to speak in such a way that everyone can understand. So when they communicated a message, they had a particular crowd. And Matthew's crowd was primarily the Jewish crowd. So these are the people who well versed, who are well versed in the Old Testament. They already know of a Messiah. They already know of what has been prophesied. So Matthew would make more use of the Old Testament context whenever he would write. And in Matthew's narration, we could say, for the sake of studies, Jesus' ministry can be divided into five phases. Jesus' ministry begins with the Sermon on the Mount. That is where it begins. Matthew chapters 5, 6, 7, and all. And Jesus' ministry ends with another sermon. That sermon is called... The Sermon on Mount Olives. We call it the Olivet Discourse. That is where Jesus in detail is talking about the second coming. When should we expect the coming of the Lord? What are going to be the signs on earth, in sky, in nations, among the Jewish people, and all of that, all of that. But after that, there is a final phase to Jesus' ministry. That starts with the prediction of his death, resurrection, and ascension all the way. So this scripture we find in the last phase of Jesus' ministry. If you are looking into your Bible this morning, it says there were two days left for Passover. So in studying the scripture, if you really want to pay keen attention to the study of the scripture, everything is so significantly important here. Places are important. People are important. What is happening there is important. Even the small thing mentioned there is important. Just to give you an example. This happens when it is still two days left for Passover. What is Passover? Passover comes from the book of Exodus. What happened in Passover? People of Israel were in bondage for 400 plus years. And they were literally slaves. They had no way of coming out. 
That is when they cried unto the Lord. And the Bible says, they cry rich heaven. Amen. Amen. The Lord said, I will deliver you. And God chooses the first deliverer. And his name is Moses. Moses had an encounter with the Lord. He had a mission and he sent out to save the people. And how did God choose to save the people? That is significantly important. How did God choose to save the people? He said, I'm going to save you. You know what? I have a mighty arm. One word from my mouth can do a miracle. All I need to say is one word. Let the river be dried. Let Pharaoh and army be killed. One word. It can do it. But God did not do that way. God said, this is how it is going to happen. You have to choose for yourself a lamp. And you have to close your door and sit inside, cut the lamb, and you have to eat the lamb in a particular way. When you cut the lamb, you take a portion of the blood and apply it on the doorpost and on the door. When the angel of death comes, he is going to pass you over. That is Passover. Amen. Okay? Anyway... There is no symbol of blood. The angel of death will go in there and kill the firstborn. Amen? But where there is the mark of the blood, the angel cannot touch that. The angel will pass over. Amen? So, people of Israel were saved because of this Passover. Because a lamb was slain and the blood was applied. Amen? Amen? So Jesus is making the prediction when the Passover is about to happen. What is the significance of that? Jesus is the true Passover lamb. Amen. Because he died, we are saved. Amen. It doesn't mean that we will not die. It doesn't mean that bad things will not happen to us. It means that we will ultimately be saved because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. So that is why I said, this is a homework. When you get home, I want you to just, for the sake of study, pay attention to everything that is happening there. Starting with the word Passover. I'll give you another example. Place, why places are important. Verse 2 on your Bible, I don't know which translation you're using. With the NIV, right side, the second verse. Okay, now I usually use KJV, by the way. Now, so, why places are important? Two places are there. One is the place of Kaiva's office, headquarters. They are the high priests, Jewish leaders. They are preparing for the Passover, but something sneaky is happening there. They are plotting to kill Jesus. Okay? So what is happening there? In a big place, in a monumental place, in a big building, a place that everyone knows that is supposed to be the center of worship, the center of spiritual matters. What is happening there now? They are plotting. Amen? They are plotting to do what? To kill Jesus. Now, I want to take you to another place. That is the house of Ma Mary and Martha and Lazarus. Nobody knows that house. Nobody cares about that house. But in that house, there are a few people who have experienced and enjoyed the love of God. Amen. They were either possessed. They were either sick. And one man was literally dead. But Jesus touched them and their life was transformed forever. What are they doing? They are worshiping God. Amen. So I just want to bring a comparison here. As a preacher of the word, I want to be true to the word that I preach. I think not a particular church. In Christianity, this is where, what is happening today. I am afraid to say this. Where worship would happen, 
floating is happening. Politics is happening. Where worship should happen, other things are happening. Let me tell you, God is only going to be pleased when the genuine worship comes out of our heart. He doesn't care how big the place is. He doesn't care what title you have. He doesn't care how big you are. If your worship is coming from a genuine heart, that is what God is going to honor. Amen. So in such a place, something else is happening. Is everyone with me? Nobody mad at me yet? All right. So in this place, there is another setting, a scene. To me, it is very striking that a woman is doing an exceptionally beautiful thing. Beautiful only in the sight of Jesus, not for anyone else. And that is all in matters, amen? That is all in matters. Lesson number one, as I look at the time. If you're writing down, write this lesson before I explain the story. It is not a waste, it is worship. That is my lesson. It is not a waste, it is worship. Matthew 6 26, 6 through 9, John chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. So what exactly is happening? So many things are happening in the background. Jesus is going into a house. And the people there, all of the names are mentioned. Mary is there, Martha is there, Lazarus is there. Then there is another guy, his name is Simon the? Aroda Varayana. Simon the? Kushtarogi Aya? But there is one woman who is unnamed, okay? Unnamed. People know everyone else. Can you all hear me okay? All right. People know everyone else's story. But this woman in other gospel name is there. I don't want to go to the explanation or either the controversy there. But in Matthew's account, this woman's name is not mentioned. Okay? What is happening here? It is a party of the people who have experienced something from the Lord. Jesus would never go into that house, especially in this context, if Simon the leper is not already clean, okay, already healed. If he's a leper, Jesus cannot, at this particular context, go there. So this is for sure, people still call him what? Simon the leper. But chances are he's already healed. Then Lazarus is there. What happened? He was dead. His body was decayed. For four days, one word from the mouth of Jesus brought him out. Amen. In uh, Christian theology... Ephesians 2, 1, we use two words. One is mortification, the other is vivification. Mortal, mortify means die. In Jesus we died, and in Jesus we rose again. Amen? Amen? Amen. Two things happened. When the salvation happened to us, there was a mortification. We are dead in Jesus. All our sins are dead in Jesus. But we don't lay dead there. We are made alive by the Spirit of God. Amen. Two things, vivification, why is life? Vivification, two things happened. 
The blood of Jesus washed me from my sin. My sins are dead. The spirit of Jesus made me alive. Amen. Amen. Who should worship the Lord? Who should throw a party for Jesus? Who should celebrate the goodness of Jesus? It is the people who experience the goodness of Jesus. Hello, somebody. What is the lesson? It is not a waste. It is worship. Who should do that? The people who experience the goodness of God. Ah. I'm sure somebody's going to get mad at me, but I'm going to say it anyway. How many of you experienced the salvation of Jesus sitting here? Oh, God. In the streets of London, I've read this story that one day, on a rainy day, a father was traveling with a young son, a 15-year-old young son. It was a rainy day. Many years ago, so they're traveling in a bus. The windows were shut down. But this particular window where the sun was sitting, he pulled that up and he had his head and his hands outside, his mouth open, making a loud noise and to people's attention, acting very weird. And water is coming through the window. And everyone said, ask your son to close the window. Ask him to shut the window down. What is happening with him? After a while, the father stood up and said, my son was born blind. He could not see anything for 15 years. Today, he is coming back after an eye surgery. He is seeing the world for the first time. He is seeing the beauty of the world for the first time. You know who we are? We were blind. We were dead in trespasses and sin. We could not enjoy the fellowship with God. We could not experience the goodness of God. But one fine day, Jesus came down. His love entered my heart. I will sing for the Lord. I will dance for the Lord. I will worship the Lord. In whatever way I can express my joy, I will do it in the presence of God. People said, tell that woman, what she's doing is a waste. Jesus said, that is not a waste. That is worshiping me. In my ministry experience, I've seen so many people. Some people are more expressive way of worship than others. I'm a pastor who gets personally get connected to people. I love to hear their stories, especially when I go to visits. When I look back and observe things I know, many of them have experienced more than others. Amen. Some of us have experienced the goodness of God so very much that we cannot keep our mouth shut. We cannot sit quiet. Oh my goodness. When we think of what the Lord has done for us, when we think of the goodness of the Lord, when we think of what Jesus has done for us, it is not a waste. It is worship. I had an auntie who would jump up and down in church. So downstairs when Sunday school is happening, it can bother a little bit. It wouldn't be good. Good. Chadi ke uru oru poyilla. One day somebody said, go, uh, Pastor, go and tell that auntie not to jump anymore. I said, you are talking to a wrong person. I want to jump more than her. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Let me ask you this simple question. Oh my gosh. They say once an eagle, always an eagle, okay? So I'm an Eagles fan. Oh, somebody got mad at me. I'm a Philadelphia Eagles fan. I was at, oh. When I went to Houston also, I was an Eagles fan. 
I still am an Eagles fan. By the way, when they won the championship, I was in Houston, okay? Anyways, you know how I watch game? Whether I play or I watch a game, man, I don't want to sit quiet. <laughs> you know, how can you sit quiet and watch a game? Somebody is throwing a touchdown, you know? I got a friend, he was such a calm and calm guy. But when he watches the game, you don't want to sit near him. He will kick you, he will, he will do everything. He's a very power. And finally, he had a son. I don't want to say name, they're watching me. <laughs> finally, he had a son. And one day, I saw his son lifting his hand and doing this. I said, brother, you are teaching him well. He is at a young age saying, hallelujah. This guy is not a fake guy. He came and told me, in a secret, pastor, that is not hallelujah. He's saying, touchdown. <laughs> that is what he sees his dad doing. Touchdown. Let me ask you something. When you watch a game, what would you do? You have never seen that player. Okay, never seen that player. You have probably not ever been to a football field. All you know is through a TV screen or what a sports commentator would tell you. Still, and tomorrow, two weeks from now, he's going to get caught in a drug issue, something. This guy is going to go to jail. All these things would happen. We don't even know him. We have never seen him. Many of them probably don't have a good family life. None of them can be seen as an icon. So I don't want to go into details. But I would still scream for them. Jump up and down for them. But who is Jesus to me? Amen. I know him. He's my savior. He's my redeemer. He saved me from death. Oh, he washed me with his blood. Every single day, I experience his goodness. He is everything to me. I would rather jump. I would rather open my mouth. I would rather throw my hand and give him worship and praise. Is worship an inconvenience for you? Is coming to church an inconvenience for you? Is church a place of boring for you? Huh? Is church just a place of entertainment? Or this is the place where you want to tell your Savior that I love you, Lord. Somebody give the Lord a praise. Oh, clap your hands and give the Lord a praise. Oh, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you really love somebody, I'll say this in a youth meeting, not now, okay? All right. You really somebody, love somebody. You want to propose to that person? You choose the most expensive place. When we have love for somebody. You know, one, one, of my, one of my nieces came to me many years ago, jumping up and down. I asked her, why? What happened? She said her brother bought her a coach bag. In those days, coach bag was a big deal. She's like, man, my brother bought me a coach bag. What is the most that we will do? to show love to somebody. When your son graduates from high school, buy him a convertible car. <laughs> huh? Or somebody telling their wives, honey, I don't know, babe, I don't know what they call these days. <laughs> Definitely not AD, don't do that, okay? <laughs> don't, don't, do, don't do AD, I don't like that. I don't do AD, I never do AD. Call the name. Anyway, otherwise I write the name. Honey, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take you to Paris. Okay, Acha. Come on, Acha, yeah. I'm going to buy you Louis Vuitton there. But is that the best that he can do? No. He probably sold a property and got some money. He wants to do that. That is not, the, that is not all that he has. That is a portion of what he has. 
He probably made some money somewhere. He wants to do, thank you. Oh, that's a nice gesture. That's a very nice gesture. Take your family for vacation, though I don't practice that. But, you know, when you, I cannot always do that for the schedule. But I love vacations. If you can go every day, you do, every year, you do that. By gifts, you do that. But that is not the best that we can do. We still have money left, okay? But for this lady, this is everything. This is everything. This is her whole life. This is all what she has. When Jesus saved me, it was not a portion of his blood. It was every single drop of blood that he shed on the cross to save me. You better get used to this pastor. I don't know for how many years, but you better get used to me. I hate it when people come and sit quiet in the church. I do. I do. Oh, Rakharaba Shata. I have a problem. I have a problem when people come and sit quiet in the church. That is not who we are. That is not who we are. That is not who we are. Oh, no, no, no. We have experienced the goodness of the Lord. It is not a waste. Somebody say with me, it's not a waste. There's another theology there. You know why it is not a waste? In the stock exchange standards or normal economic principle standards, it is a waste. She's not budgeting properly. Is she? No. Sorry. Hmm? Kanaka Nokia and Ambra Melon Derne. Oh, Rakara Oh, Kanaka Nokia and the Oh, Hallelujah. He has blessed us tremendously. He gave everything. You know what this lady could probably do? I was possessed. My life was in ruin. Jesus came to my house one day. Now all that I have, all that I experience is the goodness of the Lord. I'm nowhere in my preaching, but I just want to really share, communicate this message. It is a waste for the people who see. But Jesus said, she did it for me. So it is not a waste. What you do for Jesus is never a waste. What you give for Jesus is never a waste. When you travel for Jesus, it is never a waste. When you invest for Jesus, it is never a waste. When you support a missionary, it is never a waste. When you go on a mission trip, it is never a waste. What you give for Jesus is never a waste. What guarantee do we have for the money that is in stock exchange? Tell me. Tell me. What guarantee we do have for all the money that is in the bank? Nothing. What guarantee is that we will live forever? Nothing. There is one guarantee. Anything that you do for the kingdom, wherever this gospel is preached, wherever the gospel is preached, you will be remembered. Amen. What you do for Jesus will be remembered. Again, time is the problem here. Few in COVID time last year, I took a team with me, couple brothers, my wife was there, I think. I said, it's COVID time, peak time, two, two, year, two years ago. I said, I was leading to go to Mexico, drive down to Mexico. So we crossed the borders. And uh, we went to a slum-like place. It is like slum, slum, basically slum. Most, I won't say the name of the place on public TV. But this place is a settlement for a lot of people. It's a government property. 
in every single house in this place either somebody is killed in a drug violence or somebody is in jail so no electricity there no running water there just a group of people so i have a friend who is working among them his name is david he's a mexican guy i asked david what makes you do david always dress up well and david is a good guy what makes you do this david told me pastor i had two restaurants i was running two restaurants one day the uh, uh, the drug dealers came and abducted my college going girl she was nowhere to be seen for two weeks we cried we fasted we prayed and at the end of prayer she came home unharmed and david said rest of my life i want to serve the lord i don't want to do anything else and today there is a ministry there's a powerful ministry it's a good friend of mine and god willing we as a church will go there one day amen and i've gone there multiple times these are the things that excite me don't tell me that you just come to church three or four or five times a day and go home unless you invest something to the kingdom invest something in the community invest something in the life of the people unless you show how much you love the lord with your action baaki ingode aalkar venange na thonne amen show jesus that you love him amen not just words not just with singing but with action this girl said you know what for everyone what i'm doing is a waste but for my jesus that is the true worship and what does she do what is true worship man i cannot go f- pr- uh, further than from here the lord is not letting me what is the true worship she will sit down she will just untie her hair for a jewish woman to untie the hair is when you are really intimate with your partner worship is a time when your heart is intimate with the lord amen worship is not just an action worship is not a fake that is where your heart gets so connected to the lord she doesn't care what people are thinking she doesn't care what people are saying jesus done something for me and i want to worship him with everything that i have from his head all the way to his feet i enter the church i know this is not the preaching how i wanted it to go i have three four lessons but i know that the lord is leading me to some direction today i just want to put this before you how do you want to spend your life huh? i have so many people telling me pastor i pastor you have a daughter you have to be careful with your finance pastor traveling like this is not good for your health pastor eating at uh, odd times is not good for your health i know all of that i know but i was spared from death several times i was miraculously spared from fl- plane crash i was miraculously spared from bike accidents B- believe me i was miraculously saved from so many accidents the life i have today is a second chance i want to spend it for the lord i want to spend it for the kingdom i want to do something for the lord my life matters and i want to invest it for the kingdom i don't want to ask you how old are you but i just want to ask you this question just put your age in one place and think what have you invested for the kingdom so far what have you invested think of all the money that you have think how much of that has gone for the kingdom worship is not with tongue worship is from heart the language of worship is not english the language of worship is not malayalam the language of worship is the language of the heart amen god is looking at your heart what you do with your heart amen god is looking at that i just want to challenge my young people and others uncles and aunties man 
What is the dream that you have? We talked about Joseph. What is the dream that you have? That you want to do really well, make a lot of money, retire at age 35, buy a sports car, enjoy the rest of your life. That actually is a waste in the sight of God. That is not worship in the sight of God. When you use your health, when you use your money, when you use your wealth, when you use all of that to please Jesus, that is worship in the sight of God. I know I have a board meeting this evening. But I'm going to take the freedom anyway to tell this. I said it once. I'm going to say it again. We have 110 families I heard here. We should at least be supporting 150 missionaries. Minimum. You should spare at least. At least maybe 25 or 50 some of us maybe may not be able to go to North India or travel to Africa. But there is something that we can do with the money that God has given us. What? If you can, if you are a nurse, God has helped you professionally to become a nurse. Pick a country. I will help you travel. Last three, four years, I'll tell you how many. Three years ago, Two, three days, four days ago, I went to pick up a girl, 16-year-old from LaGuardia. When I went to that church, she was only a little girl. But she went to Morocco to be a missionary for three, three months, two plus months. I picked her from LaGuardia, uh, JFK, and I dropped her LaGuardia. 16-year-old, huh? going to a different country, staying there by herself and with a team. Time is my only enemy here. So I want to conclude. Go to nations to serve the Lord. Invest in the kingdom. Do something. Don't think that it is a waste. What you do for Jesus is worship. Amen. That is limitless love. Jesus has loved us limitlessly. Do something. You know why did Jesus honor that? Let me finish with this. Because it was a sacrifice. Jesus will never be pleased unless you do a sacrifice. You say, like, I get, I want 12 hours of sleep. Then I want to finish all of my homework. If I have time, I will go to church. No. Even when you have all of your homework, everything that you have, you spare an hour to serve the Lord. That is sacrifice. Unless you sacrifice, Jesus is not going to be pleased. Because Jesus did the ultimate sacrifice. What he's expecting from us. He sacrifice. Amen? Amen? Worship is not a waste. Say with me. It is not a waste. Or oh, please say with me. It is not a waste. It is worship. What we do for Jesus is worship.